Are you a Lego fan? Is Halloween your favorite holiday? If so, I've got a treat for you. <laughs> Welcome to 3D Chill. Today, we're gonna take this minifig, and with a little bit of 3D print magic, we're gonna make it not so mini. In other words, we're making a 3D printed giant Lego inspired minifig. My original plan was just to download one of these minifigs and scale it up. That plan quickly changed when I was getting ready to print. As you can see here, enlarging a smaller print doesn't always give you the best result. It's like enlarging a thumbnail photo. It looks great small, but when you blow it up, uh, well, you can see for yourself. Instead of simply enlarging a small model, take the time to find a model that's already at the size you want to print. Trust me, you'll thank me later. And with how big this project was, I didn't want to take any chances. But if I wasn't just going to scale up this one and a half inch minifig, what other options did I have? Luckily for me, someone already thought of that, and her name is Julia Ebert. She has a very detailed website outlining her design considerations for this skeleton. After a quick read, I knew this was my next project. Look at the difference between the scaled up minifig and the giant skeleton she designed. It's not even close, and I think you'll agree. Why don't you head on over to printables.com, grab yourself a copy, and follow along. I've left the links in the description below. Stick around till the end for some tips and tricks I've learned while putting this amazing print together. From here on out, it's all treats and no tricks. You, are you, yeah, yeah, you. Are you enjoying this video? Please leave a like and subscribe. It'll motivate me to make more videos just like this one. Let's get to it.
while assembling this print was fairly simple, I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks to keep in mind. Make sure you purge before you start printing in white, or any other color for that matter. After changing filaments, I find myself purging anywhere from 50 to 100 millimeters worth of filament. Once you get a solid color, you're good to go. I was printing some black pieces before I started the skeleton and uh, yeah. With that out of the way, let's go to assembly. In order to attach the arms to the body, you'll want to take the joints, snap it into the shoulder, and then take the whole arm assembly and attach it to the body. You'll want to repeat this for the legs. Let's talk about the head. This was the hardest part to put together. If I really wanted this neck piece out, I would probably have to disassemble the head, and I really don't feel like doing that. Bottom line is, this isn't coming off. With such a tight fit, you may have a problem turning the head. If you plan on posing with this head, you may want to apply a little bit of white lithium grease. I had no issues at all with the face pieces, and as you can see, they fit nice and flush. This skeleton has been standing up for close to a year. It's really sturdy, so you won't have any problems standing it up. The joints aren't as strong as they used to be, but they're strong enough. This is a special print for me. This is my largest project to date. But more importantly, it was also what inspired me to make this channel. I enjoyed the experience so much, I wanted to share it with the world. If you enjoy LEGO as much as we do, check out our sister channel, BrickMade, for in-depth reviews on the latest sets and anything LEGO related. If you made it this far, thank you for your support. If you enjoyed this build, please share it with your friends. It'll help the channel grow. And until next time, happy printing!